Hi, let's talk about math on the exam. You know, only about 10% of the questions are math questions. And if you're good in math, you're likely to score well. But you, you shouldn't get too cocky because you can easily make a dumb mistake. If students are weak in math, they often fret too much about it and spend too much time studying math and not the important stuff like vocabulary, key facts, and key concepts. You know, you could miss all the math questions and still pass the exam. We don't recommend that. So your primary study focus should not be on math, but on the key facts and vocabulary. It's very important to memorize the formulas and procedures that we present. If you remember the formula, you can write it down first and then solve the problem by plugging in the appropriate numbers. What we do in this course is present the types of problems you're likely to see on the exam, and we suggest procedures for solving them. While watching the videos, use your calculator and follow along with the calculations. Remember, read the questions carefully. Ask yourself, what type of question is it? Is it appraisal, financing, commissions, area and square footage, prorations, and so on? Uh, whatever it is, read the question carefully and make sure you know what type of question it is, and then you can apply a particular formula. Determine also what the question is asking you to find. If it deals with property area or perimeter, draw a diagram and then label the dimensions. Also, write down the formulas you need to solve each part of the problem. Solve those parts to arrive at the final answer. And then, Reread the problem to make sure your answer corresponds with what the problem is asking. You know, in the course material, we do include additional math problems as homework. The solutions are also included, and these are for your own studying pleasure and enjoyment. Finally, don't overstudy the math. Even if you're not the best mathematician, you'll probably do okay. Math lesson number one is on area and perimeter. And in all of these math lessons, what I'd like you to do is make sure you read the introductory material in your course material. Then follow along with the video, solving the problems as you go. This is math lesson number one. And we're going to be talking about area and perimeter. First of all, a few recommendations. Please read the math introduction in the course material for every one of the math lessons. Secondly, memorize formulas. For example, in this lesson, we're going to be do dealing with area. An area is, of course, length times width, area of a rectangle or a square. Area of a triangle, we'll also get into that. Please memorize certain distances and conversions. For example, one yard is equal to three feet, one mile, 5,280 feet. And then, whenever possible, draw a diagram and label it. So, for example, if you were given a problem that said a parcel is 85 feet by 120 feet, draw that rectangle, label it, and that will help you visualize the problem to a much greater degree before you start punching buttons on your calculator. Here's question number one. If a parcel of land is 85 feet by 120 feet, what's its area? Well, let's draw our diagram. Here it is, 85 feet by 120 feet. And we know, hopefully we remember from school somewhere in our distant past, that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the length being 80 feet, you can doesn't matter which one you put in there as the length or the width, but it's 85 feet by 120 feet. So the area of this parcel is 10,200 square feet. That question number one is relatively simple, but how might that fit in to a math question on the exam? Well, it could be that straightforward, or it then could ask that, this property sold for so many dollars per square foot, what was the sales price? Or the property sold for so many dollars per square foot, 
and your commission was X percent, what was your commission? So you can see how an area problem might be compounded with some other questions. Here's number two. If a parcel of land is 47 feet wide and contains 8554 square feet, what's its depth? So in this problem, we're given a rectangular parcel and told that it's 47 feet wide and we're given its area. We're not given the other side and asked to find the area. We're given one side and the area and being asked to find the other side. So if we know that area is length times width, the length of a parcel is equal to the area divided by the width. So with that in mind, we take the area, 8554 square feet, we divide it by 47 feet, and that gives us a length of the other side of 182 feet. So just keep in mind, whenever you have a rectangle or a square and you're given one side and the area, to find the other side, you divide the area by the side you know. Question number three. An owner wants to build a fence around a parcel of land 165 feet by 25 yards. How many linear feet of fence will be required? So let's draw our diagram. Here's our parcel 25 yards by 165 feet. Now, if we don't read this problem carefully, we could make two common mistakes. One mistake would be not to convert yards to feet, and another mistake would be to think that they're really asking for the area. So a common mistake might be to multiply 25 by 165 to get an area, but we're multiplying yards times feet in that circumstance. And secondly, the question is not asking us to find the area. Well, if we convert yards to feet, we get 25 yards times three feet per yard for 75 feet. And again, we're not interested in the area. We're really interested in how many feet of fence, which is the perimeter. So to find the perimeter, we simply add all four sides together. So we add 165 plus 75 plus 165 plus 75, and that gives us a perimeter of 480 feet. Now, what if this question number three was a multiple choice question? I'm willing to bet that the people who write the examinations would have, as some of the other answers, the 165 plus 25 plus 165 plus 25, so if you didn't convert the yards to feet, you'd have an incorrect perimeter. And then I'm willing to bet they would have 165 times 25 as another answer and 165 times 75 as another answer. Both of those are areas. That's not what we were looking for, but those would probably be some of the other answers. So in a multiple choice question, you could have done this question incorrectly in some way, shape, or form, came and still come up with one of the answers that are listed there as A, B, C, or D. Question number four. How many acres are contained in a parcel of land 300 feet by 600 feet? First of all, an acre is a measurement of area, of space. So here's our parcel 300 feet by 600 feet, and let's find its area in square feet. So we multiply length times width, and that gives us an area of 180,000 square feet. Now, the question becomes how many square feet per acre? This is a number you must memorize, and the answer is 43,560 square feet are in one acre. Knowing that, we can find the acreage by taking the area in square feet and divide it by the number of square feet per acre. So we take 180,000, divide it by 43,560, and we get 4.13 acres. That's what the question's asking for. That's our answer. So here's a little math tip to remember how many square feet in an acre. It's 43,560 
So to remember, use the 7-Eleven rule. In other words, 4 and 3 add up to 7, 5 and 6 add up to 11, and then we have the zero. So if you're trying to remember what an acre is, it's 43,560 square feet. To give you a feel for how large an acre is, is a football field more or less than one acre? What do you think? Well, a football field actually contains, between the end zones, not including the end zones, contains 48,000 square feet. So an acre would be just a little bit smaller than a football field. So what you've got to remember is an acre is 43,560 square feet. Question five. If a triangular parcel measures 425 feet by 322 feet high, what's its area? So here's our parcel, here's our triangle. 425 feet is the base, as we'll call it, and 322 feet is the height. And some of you might want to think about a triangle as simply being half of a rectangle. So if we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width, then the area of this right triangle is actually one half the length times the width, or one half what's called the base times the height. So that's another formula you should remember. The area of a triangle is equal to one half the base times the height. So it's one half times 425 times 322. The area of our triangle is 68,425 square feet. One of the questions you might have is, will they give me uh, an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle? The answer is no. Uh, typically, what we'll only see on the examination if a triangle is involved is a right triangle. In that, in a right triangle, of course, is always one half of a rectangle or a square. So no equilateral, no isosceles or other kind of triangles on the examination. So that concludes math lesson number one on area and perimeter.